Hi, it's Steve from Part Select. In this video, we'd like to share with you some tips on how to properly clean and maintain your freezer. Now, our first step will be to remove all of the items from the freezer. So you should have on hand a one or two ice boxes that we can put those in. If you don't have an ice box handy, you can put them in cardboard boxes, but wrap them well with some blankets just so we don't get any food damage. Once we've emptied the freezer, our next step will be to turn it off, then we'll open the lid or the door, and we'll allow it to come to somewhat close to room temperature, and that will allow us to easily remove any frost buildup that may have occurred. Now as you're removing the items from your freezer, just take note of each of those items looking for signs of any kind of damage, such as freezer burn. Now, typically with freezer burn, you'll see a layer of frost or ice crystals on the surface of the food item, or you may note that they appear dried out or shriveled up. Now that we've removed all of the items and our freezer is empty, it's now time to defrost it. If you have a large frost buildup on the interior liner of your freezer, you may be tempted to use your heat gun to remove it. We certainly don't recommend doing that. You could use a hairdryer on a low heat setting to help speed up the process, but you want to make sure that you don't potentially damage the interior liner of your freezer. Regardless of whether it's a plastic liner or a metal liner, you can damage it by using something as severe as a heat gun. Now besides not using a heat gun to remove that excess frost, we also suggest that you do not use any mechanical means such as a putty knife or a butter knife to remove that frost as well. You run the risk of not only damaging the surface of your interior liner, but you could actually puncture one of your refrigeration lines and therefore rendering your freezer useless. Now that we've completely defrosted the freezer, we've drained out that water, we're next going to clean it. You can use something as simple as dish detergent and some warm water and either a soft scrub brush or simply a cleaning rag. We'll begin by cleaning the top area of the freezer opening first. Then we'll do the interior walls and finish up with the bottom. Now that we've got it thoroughly scrubbed, our next step will be to rinse it well. So we'll just use clear water and either a soft rag or a sponge, and then we'll wipe down all of those interior surfaces in the same sequence that we washed it. Now as we turn our attention to the lid liner and gasket, we want to carefully inspect that gasket, looking for any signs of a deformity or damage, and if so, you'll need to replace that gasket as well. We'll look at the liner, check for any signs of a crack, and if so, you'll either have to repair that or replace the entire lid. Now that we've done an initial inspection of that gasket and lid liner, and we've determined they're okay, we'll next set about cleaning it. So again, we'll use something as simple as a dish detergent and water, or you can use a spray-on type of cleaner, either with a rag or a soft sponge, We'll clean the entire surface of that gasket. Now, once we're satisfied that we've got the gasket nice and clean, we'll next turn our attention to the actual liner itself and give it a good scrubbing. Now, to clean the exterior surfaces of your freezer, again, we can use the dish detergent and water solution, any type of a spray-on cleaner, as long as it's safe to use on a painted surface. We'll scrub it with either a sponge, a soft brush, or a rag. We'll rinse that as well and allow it to dry. Now with the chest type freezer, there's a pretty good chance that you'll have a grill on the side of that freezer located next to the compressor. You want to make sure that that grill is clear and free of any lint buildup. It needs to be clean so that air can circulate freely over top of the compressor to keep your freezer running smoothly. Now that we've defrosted, cleaned and rinsed the interior of the freezer, we're ready to put the drain plug back in. It's important that we do that to make sure that no room air enters the freezer while it's working. So be sure to turn it to the upright position, press it firmly into place, and then in the interior, be sure to put the plug back in. Once we've done all that, we're safe to turn the freezer back on. Thank you so much for watching this video. We certainly hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any tips that you'd like to share with us, we'd love to hear from you. So be sure to enter them in the comments section below. For more videos on appliance repair, maintenance and cleaning tips, be sure to visit our website. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.